I estimate that the total addressable market for the stuff that these companies are doing is about $5 trillion. It's bigger than the electric vehicle industry. And yet, the hype that surrounds electric vehicles and other uh, hyped-up areas uh, has not yet come because we haven't got any public companies, with the exception of agronomics, um, in this area. Hello, world. This is the Impact Investing Show, where we think and learn about how to save the world and improve the lives of all conscious creatures by acting today and investing into the future. I'm Leonard Shelter. Welcome to the show. So that little snippet you saw in the intro there was Mr. Jim Mellon giving a keynote at the Climate Tech Conference in London this year. He talked about the future of cellular agriculture and his company Agronomics. Agronomics is a venture capital fund, basically, investing in young startups in the cellular agriculture space, which you can buy on the London Stock Exchange. So right now it's pretty much the only option to buy into this sector on the public stock market, because the companies themselves are not public yet. So in our last video, we talked about his expectations for the timeline of the space, how long the products would take to be ready for market and how long the market dispersion would take. You can check out this video right here. So today I'd like to talk about his economic expectations for the space regarding market size and so on. So let's hear what he had to say about that. I do think that 50% of our meat market within 15 years, maybe even sooner, uh, will be produced by plant-based companies or cell ag-based companies. Uh, and that's a vast market, that's $1.4 trillion, uh, the size of the economy of Spain on its own. I do think that the milk market is going to be completely upended, and that's a $750 billion market. I think the fish market, which is somewhere between uh, $200 and $300 billion, will be 50% sell ag within 10 years. And many of these materials that I mentioned earlier will almost uh, all be sell ag uh, within 10 or 15 years. And I would think that some of the bigger companies in this field, and the biggest is Eat Just, and then there's Upside Foods, formerly known as Memphis Foods, Blue Nalu, uh, Perfect Day, Clara, will at some point in the next year go public in the United States offering um, you know, economic opportunities for investors. And then behind that, there will be a whole load of new companies um, uh, coming along as well. So that was a bunch of impressive numbers, huh? So let's look at them in detail and see what they mean for investors in agronomics or overall the cellular agriculture space. Regarding meat, Mr. Mellon believes that 50% of our meat market within 15 years, maybe even sooner, uh, will be produced by plant-based companies or cell ag-based companies. For dairy or the milk market, he estimates that the milk market is going to be completely upended. Of course, fish and seafood is another important sector, which will be 50% sell ag within 10 years. And lastly, there are materials, leather, for example, produced by companies like in vitro labs. So leather will almost all be sell ag uh, within 10 or 15 years. So this is probably a good time to remind you that this is not financial advice. Do your own research. I'm just a dude on the internet and I'm not recommending you to buy or to sell any securities or stocks based on this video. This is purely for entertainment and educational purposes only. So with that out of the way, what could hypothetically happen to you if you were hypothetically an investor in agronomics? What could you expect from the stocks? Let's hop into a really quick price model that I set up based on the numbers from this video to get a rough idea of what we're looking at here. Here I tried to somehow make sense of all these numbers that he threw around and to get a ballpark idea of what we're talking about in terms of numbers. So let's start at the top, looking at the market size potential. Mr. Mellon said that the market for all of these products would be $5 trillion. So here it's enlisted in billions of dollars, so 5,000 billions is 1 trillion, as you know. And he said that cell egg and plant-based meats will be $1.4 trillion. Cellular agriculture dairy products will be $750 billion. Seafood from cellular agriculture will be $250 billion. And then he had materials, and I included the rest here to just get to the $5 trillion. So the discrepancy probably stems from the $5 trillion to be an expected market in 10 years. And these actual numbers on the markets are current numbers of the market size. So that's why there is this large rest, rest portion. So look at the market shares that he predicted. So he said cellular agriculture and plant-based meats will be responsible for about 50% of the meat market in 15 years. 
So if we just look at 10 years out, let's say it's 40%. Cellular agriculture dairy will be replaced or will entirely replace the conventional dairy industry. So here we have 100%. Cellular agriculture seafood will be 50% of the market, as he estimates. So for the rest, materials and so on, I put in 50% as well to get a reasonable estimate. So in the third column, you can see the prices adjusted with these percentages. So the 560 billion for the plant-based and cellular agriculture meat, for example, is 40% of the 1.4 trillion total size of the meat market. So if you add all this up, you get the total addressable market for these cellular agriculture products to be $2.7 trillion, based on the estimates put out here in this video. So now let's look at the price model for agronomics. As I said, Agronomics is basically a venture capital fund investing in these startups before they go public themselves. So they aim at owning a certain percentage of these companies and then participate in the IPO to gain X shares or pay out at that event. So first up, let's look at the market share of companies inside the Agronomics portfolio. I used ANIC here, which is just the ticker symbol for Agronomics. As you can see, I have three columns here. On the left, you have a bear case. In the middle is a realistic expectation. And then on the right is a bull case. So for the bear case, I expected that 10% of the total cellular agriculture market will be taken up by companies inside the agronomics portfolio. It's 15% for the realistic case and 20% in the bull case. I think these numbers are pretty conservative because agronomics does not just hold one company, they actually hold 17 companies at the moment. Some of them are really big players in the space already. So 20% market penetration is not, not that big of a stretch, I think. It's a fairly conservative estimate. Then you have the percentage ownership of ANIC in these companies. So according to their investment thesis, agronomics aims to own around 5% of these companies when they invest. And you can see here from their investor deck, that at least for their largest positions, 5% is a pretty good estimate for their ownership percentage of these companies. So for example, you have Vitro Labs here, which produces leather, and Agronomics owns almost 12% of Vitro Labs. And for their other largest positions, so Formo, Blue Nalu, Meetable, Solar Foods, and so on, you can see their ownership percentage is around 5%. So next up would be the PE ratios of these companies. The PE ratio is a traditional or conventional measure of calculating the worth of a company and if it's correctly priced or not. P stands for the price, so the total price of all the outstanding shares of a company versus the earnings, which is earnings of that company for one given year. So usually it's a multiple of the earnings and you can see that I estimated for the bear case a PE ratio of 5, which is again very conservative for these growth companies. The realistic scenario estimates 10 as a PE ratio and 25 for the bull case. Here you can see some comparison PE ratios for companies in the similar space. So Tyson Foods is one of the largest meat producers in the world. They have a PE ratio of 8.6. So that means all the outstanding shares of Tyson Foods are worth 8.6 times their earnings of $3.5 billion last year. Other examples here are JBS, which is another big meat producer with a PE ratio of 3.9. Nestle actually has 20.8, which is rather high for these uh, consumer good companies. Yili Group 23, but also negative values for Oatly and Beyond Meat, which means they actually lose money still and they have negative earnings. So back to the price model. The last line of importance here is the survival rate. So this means how many of the companies inside the agronomics portfolio will actually make it, will actually go public. Because, let's face it, these are still startups in a very competitive and very young sector. So there might be a lot of death of these companies. Many might not survive at all. But again, here I took conservative estimates because all the companies in the portfolio are already multi-million dollar valuations and they are beyond the very first startup phase. So they are somewhat proven already and probably will not fail at the typical 90% rate or so of startups. So for the bear case, I estimated that only 20% of the companies will survive and actually go public, which would be a really poor result, I think. For the bull case, 50% I still is, is, is an okay estimate. It's still quite uh, conservative. So the last line actually calculates the market cap of agronomics based on these estimates for the three scenarios. This works as follows. 
you start with the total market for cellular agriculture products calculated on top with 2.7 trillion dollars. Of this market, 10% will go to the companies inside the agronomics portfolio. Of these companies, agronomics owns 5%. These companies have a PE ratio of 5, so multiply by 5 again, but only 20% of these companies might survive. So that will give you $14 billion of market capitalization for agronomics, the stock. For the realistic and the bull case, you can see the market cap of agronomics would be significantly higher, almost three times as high for the bull case. So now for the fun part. So we calculated a very conservative bear case here for the market capitalization of agronomics of $14 billion in about 10 years, based on some of the numbers from the video and very conservative estimates taken for the calculations. So in 10 years, agronomics could be worth $14 billion, but now look at this. This is the current valuation of agronomics. It's just $228 million. That's nothing in comparison. So this means that agronomics could be worth 59 times as much as it is today in just 10 years for the bear case. In the bull case, it could be 1486 times as much. That's some crazy numbers. If you break that down in compound annual growth rate, so constant increase each year, you get 30% of annual growth in the bear case and up to 79% per year growth of agronomics over a 10 year period. That's some crazy numbers and sounds pretty juicy to me. But of course, all of this is very wild speculation at this point. You have seen how many estimates I had to take to bolt together this very rough price model. And of course, yeah, 30% per year or even 79% annual growth rate sounds amazing. But keep in mind that this is an annualized growth rate over 10 years. Holding something for 10 years is quite a long time for many investors. There might be a lot of fluctuation on the way there, so it's not that easy to just hold it. And also keep in mind that agronomics might not be around in 10 years. Actually, if everything goes to plan, all these companies inside their portfolio will have IPO'd at that point in time and agronomics is no longer necessary. So if that happens, the companies either pay out agronomics, their shareholders, in shares or in cash. We'll see how that works out. But ideally, agronomics will not be around in 10 years because all companies have IPO'd and are public on themselves. A 1,500x in 10 years might sound pretty crazy to some of you. And an annual growth rate of 79% certainly sounds pretty good compared to a standard index fund which grows around 7% a year or so. But I don't think these numbers are all that crazy, to be honest. The estimates I took were quite conservative. So look at the year-to-date return of agronomics, it was 124%. The one-year return on the stock already for the past year was over 360%. So these are even more insane numbers than what I predicted in my short price model here. And I think there is a lot of upside in the sector, and with these very conservative numbers, the opportunity is already great. So think what would could happen if everything works really well. So I hope that this little price model I put together here could give you some context on the numbers and provide some idea of the economic potential of this amazing sector. I personally think it's a great opportunity not just to fund a really important technology, but also to make a great buck on the way up, which is always a great combination. So if you found value in this video, please give it a like and do all that YouTube clicky stuff. And I will see you in the next one.